the topic I want to talk about what beginners to a wood burning stove need to know. Watch this. Pretty hot to my face. Burn your face right off with that. Feel a little bit inspired today. This is my dessert. Second bowl of cereal, the first one was dinner, second one's dessert. I know I'm not supposed to eat this in front of the camera, but I can cut those parts out. My microphone crapped out on me, so I got the camera close with a wide angle. It looks kind of funny. Oh well, I want to make sure the audio is working well. What I'm inspired about today is the topic I want to talk about, what beginners to a wood burning stove need to know. Every winter I've been burning in this stove 24 seven, October, Thanksgiving, depending on the weather, to about uh, Easter. Just wait for me to keep track of something. Is my wife coming down here? No. And um, it's March. I think uh, seventh today, it's starting to get warm, it's in the 50s. You don't burn too much, the season's almost over. I keep the stove on low, it's enough to keep the house uh, heating system from kicking on, and that's, that's all you need, right? You just, you don't wanna get the house burning hot, you just don't want your other heating system to kick on. Um, so it does the trick. So I think what I wanna show today is just some of the basics. Like what are the key elements that a beginner uh, would be interested in? And part of it is staying calm, staying cool, have some cereal, chill out. I recently joined a uh, Martial arts, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school. It's my uh, third week of getting my butt kicked. And the owner, the master there, I don't know what the title is, Sensei. Um, great guy. He said he just got a wood burning stove. He's getting it installed Tuesday. We had some conversations. And uh, one of the things I didn't know that I wish I knew that I told him is the importance of having a good mechanism to light your fire with. I almost never use this now. Sometimes I'll just get the charcoal going, but that's about it. I don't really use it to light the stove because I keep it lit. I don't let it go out. You'll see it's still kind of lit. It's almost out, but as long as the chimney pipe's warm and I got some red hot coals, I'm good to go. I don't need a uh, propane torch, someone's gonna say it's math gas, whatever, it's fuel. Um, I think it's worth spending a little bit more money on something good because every time I click the button, it turns on. And I've used other ones where I can fiddle with it and then it sucks, it's not worth it. Just get a good one, it's worth the money. You can see that, but I'm not wearing my gloves. I'll burn myself. You wanna know how long my gloves are? They're that long. Let's find out. All right? You can't see the burn? It's right there. So, 
I like long gloves, you can get them longer, I think it's unnecessary. Just be careful. I joke around and I say, the first rule of your wood burning stove is put on your gloves. Uh, my first year I burned myself so many times, I had so many scars because I had like shorter gloves just for my hands. Scars up and down my, my wrist, my forearms. I get good gloves and I respect the stove. Just respect it. They're going to wear out. I'm careful not to burn a hole through them, but just with time they wear out. I think I got these, I think I got these on Amazon for like 25 bucks, 30 bucks, leather welding gloves. In the last two seasons, I just wore a hole into one of them because I, I realized that's where I just always grab the wood with this hand and, and this finger. But otherwise, this is like one of my tools must have. Three other tools. Don't buy them at that fancy store because they're going to try to charge you like $300 for, for this and a stand. This hook to rake stuff around, just to really clean stuff up. I'll show you how it works. I use this hook to, every single time I go into the stove, that's a tool I use. Second most common tool I'm using is wooden shovel. I'm oh, sorry, wooden shovel. Metal shovel. I'm going kind of just cleaning off the edge and if something falls on the ground, I'm not using the brush. As you can see, it's melted. If you touch anything hot, the bristles melt. But I will use this to scoop stuff up, right? Imagine I'm at the ground, but I got to show you up here. And I'll just scoop up a red hot coal, flick it back in the stove, should something fall out. I will use my my brush maybe just a brush on the outside here i got another little brush there but my ash pan i pull that out and i can reach in there clean out the ash pan so these are three must-have tools it's march lowe's home depot whatever they sell the three of these with a stand on clearance in march because the season's pretty much over um i got some for luigi the, uh, the owner of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Martial Arts Studio. He's the master there. And uh, clearance, 10 bucks. So you don't need anything fancy. What I will say is I do have two of these. One came with the stove and the handle's a little bit thicker on this one. And it's just something you can get a good grip on. Holding on to this handle, rather narrow, it's not easy to hold. That's more comfortable in my hand. You could put something around it, make your own handle, get a dowel of wood, drill out the middle, bolt it on the outside, whatever. Um, anyways, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay more than, I got mine for this and a stand and one of those things that look, look, looks like scissors that you move wood with and never used it. I use it outside in the fire pit. I got the stand and all that for 50 bucks, so. Don't pay more than that for these tools. Um, let's see if I got it in the camera. Yeah, you can see it here. I added these little, they're supposed to be like boat rope anchors here, just so it can hold this strap for this bag. Get a bag, it's good to carry wood. Also keep some of the, the dust away. I use this stand as my smaller stand. I fill up this stand all the way up almost to the ceiling on a cold days and that one too. When it's really cold, I got this thing blaring. So what I'm gonna do next, after I have another bite of my cereal, I'm going to fiddle in the stove, explain to you briefly what I see in terms of lighting a fire, because I think if you're new to a wood burning stove, you're like, how do I light it? 
If you know your stove, if you know how to catch wood on fire, it's easy. If you don't know, you must want a blowtorch, maybe use kindling. You gotta have dry wood, seasoned wood. What does that mean? The moisture's gotta be low enough that you're not evaporating moisture. Burning wood to evaporate moisture. Season it for a year. Split it, let it sit for a year. It's March, you gotta split all your wood now. Come November, that's only three, seven, eight. That's only eight months away. You're splitting wood in March, you don't have a whole year. Six months minimum. I've, uh, I've used wood of different ages. I've used wood tree trunks that have been sitting around for a year. Then I sawed them up and split them and they still had moisture. You really got to split it and dry it. Use dry wood. If you like using moisture meters, fine, have at it. I threw mine in the garbage. What do you do with a wood moisture meter if someone gifted it to you or you got it with your wood burning stove? Let me show you briefly. And that's what you do. Dry your wood for a year and you won't need it. Honey nut Cheerios, by the way. That's why it's a dessert. I'm gonna to try to stay off to the side so you can see inside the stove. If you see orange, that means something's burning. If you see white, that's ash. It doesn't burn anymore, it's just minerals. The black stuff, that's charcoal. When wood gets hot enough, Without oxygen, it doesn't burn, it just transforms into charcoal. Same thing, charcoal briquettes for your grill are made out of. It burns very well without smoke. So, let's do this. Remember what I said, right? Put these gloves on first, because I burned myself. This year, probably only two, three times, because this time I wasn't wearing gloves. This time I probably, I reached in too deep. What do I do? Open my air intake. I want a bunch of air to get in there. It was closed, so it burned slowly. But I also cracked the door open. Leave a big gap. So that air can get in, start burning up the charcoal, and also get the smoke out. Give it five, 10 seconds. Let clean air get in there, let the smoke get out. Because if you open it too fast, you get a puff of smoke that comes in here. Just wait, be patient. Let's see if we got a good camera angle. No, we don't. Let me get it a little bit closer. There we go. All right, we're in business. It's a good angle. Mind you, I have an ash pan. I hear some stoves don't have it. It's a shame. What does the ash pan do? It collects ashes. The bottom of the wood burning stove has some holes in this direction and this direction. There are four slits. The ashes can fall down. This material here, it's ash. The black stuff, that's charcoal. That's great. If you can see some of it's orange. That stuff burns very well. And it doesn't make any smoke. So it's great for starting fires. That's how I start my fires. Again, gloves. All I'm doing raking back and forth. All I want to do is clear the path to those slits because air comes up through it in my stove because there's chambers that go up and down the sidewalls of the, the frame. Uh, it, some air goes up through the frame and some air goes through these slits if you can see that. I don't want to clean it up too much because I'm going to lose some of that charcoal and still fuel. But if I can just move it around so it's not so compact, so some air can move through it, that's all I care about. And you can see all of the black and charcoal in here. For me, that's fuel. Way better than kindling. 
I'll scratch the material off from the side because if the ash is on the side, it can't fall in. That's all I do. So I have a beautiful pile, beautiful pile of charcoal. Watch this. Pretty hot to my face. Um, I got a catalytic combustor thermometer. It's reading 189. It's still good and warm. I mean, I, don't, I think anything less than 250 is, you know, water is still water under 200. But 250, I think, is minimum temperature you want to close the door on wood. Burn your face right off with that. The key is there's no smoke. There's no smoke coming in the room. If I put a piece of wood there, and I'll do it too. Got a little piece of little piece of bark. Watch that start smoking. It's fuel just the same. So it lit on fire. Now you see the smoke. When there's no fire, there's smoke. It's trying to catch on fire, but it's smoking. I don't know if you can see a little bit of that smoke. And some of it's coming out of the stove. You don't want that. Uh, yeah. I got plenty of heat in there. Let me show you what I do next. I'll do how I do in reality, all right? I want to strategically place these, get them nice and flush up against the wall. Just kind of touch myself there. You see how deep, deep I'm putting my hands in there? And that's top, all right? Try to keep that nice and straight. I try to make some spaces in there. So Get my next piece and it holds itself, it doesn't want to roll out. And you never have all the pieces that you like, so whatever. Good enough. Probably get something in there, maybe. It'll be easier said than done. There we go. If I had a short piece, I'd stick it in here, I don't have any. Again, I take my pan. The edge, throw it in. See what the ash pan looks like. That can be cleaned tomorrow morning. It'll still be there. That's from burning all day. And you saw I just kind of moved the ashes around a little bit. The wood is gonna be a blanket for the heat. See it's starting to smoke? I gotta close my door real soon. Otherwise, I got smoke in the room. The ash pan being open, air is coming up through those holes. And the oxygen is forced to burn because red hot coals are, are hot. What I would do is, what I would recommend is, if you really want to light your wood, just leave a gap. My air is wide open. I don't have air control on my exhaust pipe, whatever it's called, a damper, who knows. With my bypass open, my bypass isn't open. So all that does is open a piece of metal right there so it's wide open to go straight up. Otherwise, the air needs to flow up the front through my catalytic combustor and then back. See how that lit right up? Because the air that's coming through the doorway wants to come in quickly because it's a narrow slit and heat rises. Heat wants to rise at its own rate and it's gonna pull the air and watch. Watch that flame when I open a door. It's not gonna be moving so quickly. 
Kind of slowed down. I don't know if you noticed that. Right? Kind of slowed down. Because the air wasn't blowing. The velocity of that little crack in the door, I wasn't blowing on it. Watch when I close it. There's a little slit. Now the air, look at that. It's just blowing on those red hot coals. So it's really moving in there. It's the velocity going directly on those red hot coals. It's going to start get get it going. So leaving that cracked open will help. It's not the amount of air. It's really the velocity through the really focused crack. Normally I just walk away. Normally I just do this, walk away and close my air intake, walk away and this will burn. It'll probably almost all burn out by about 5 a.m. It's about 10 p.m. right now. About 5 a.m. would be done. I wake up at 7 and I just got a few red hot coals less than what we started with. But if you really want to get this going, because you got company or you're making a video and you want to get fancy crazy, let me force some air in from above. Now the air coming in has to go th directly through those red hot coals. I'm going to accelerate this. I'm going to open it. I'm going to gonna make sure there's a direct hole to one of those inlets. It's not kind of clogged up with all that ash. Here it comes. The glass is black. I don't clean the glass because it'll clean itself. It'll just, all that soot will burn off. Get the stove up to six, seven, eight hundred degrees, your glass will be clean. If you let the stove die from real hot, it will stay clean. If you drop the stove to low by myself, decreasing the air intake, maybe some people, if they slow down the exhaust, either way, controlling airflow. If you let it go really slowly, your glass is, excuse me, your glass is going to turn black. But as the stove gets hotter and more heat rises and it rises faster, it's going to pull more air in and it's really going to rip it up. As more wood catches on fire, you have more flames, more heat more heat rising, pulling more air in, and it just goes mad. But it's not really that hot. I'm showing at the exhaust, 229 degrees. Guys, that's not hot. It just looks that way because you got a bunch of oxygen going in there. What I told uh, the Dojo Master, I don't know what the place is called, Dojo. It's a school. I told him, if you're doing this, you're putting a lot of oxygen in. If you shut the door real real fast, you can have a lot of unburned oxygen in there and get a, what's it called, backdraft. And it looks like a little explosion in there. I thought it was gonna bust my glass one day. It was like, actually around the seam, like a bunch of dust came out. So, if you're gonna do this with the ash pan like I'm doing, take this word of advice. You either close this super slowly, So I'll slow that down before you stop it. Okay? Or open the door. Now this will act as the regulator for any air pressure, right? And I don't know if you heard that, but when I closed it, this door started bouncing like that. I don't know if you heard it. Now I can close this. Make sure that's tight. It's no longer shooting out flames. Kind of slowed down a little bit. And what I typically do, if it was really cold outside, I'd maybe keep it going, warm it up, get my house warm. 
It's like 50 outside, maybe 40. My house is warm, I don't need this. So what I do is I close my air intake and I say goodnight and I walk away and I go eat some ice cream. Candy bars, no, just kidding. <clears throat> I do have a little switch for a fan. Fan is mounted to the back. That was an option for this stove. It's pulling air up through the bottom. This section is hollow. And this top is like a false top. And that's where it's blown the air out. This top isn't quite as hot as this lower part. See that slit through there? That's where the air comes out. I do put another fan here to kind of graze the side of the stove. I used to have this fan in the back because I'd blow on this side of the stove if I was really trying to extract the heat off this. I Turn it on low. I'm cooking at uh, 312. That's my catalytic catalyst monitor. I leave the bypass open. Basically, this is what it looks like inside. There's a piece of metal. You pull the lever that way, it goes that way. You push it in, it goes that way. That's all it is. If I block it, it forces air to go up the front and then through like a little space here across the top and then it can go up. So I'll leave it open. If you have a catalytic converter or catalytic combustor, you don't engage that till at least 500 because you need that temperature for the reaction to happen. All right, guys, what else can I share? I'm almost done here. I'm almost done. I got a little broom. I love my little broom. Metal container was from Holiday Cookies and I sweep up in there. I use a metal container because sometimes I get red hot coals and I don't want to burn through a piece of plastic. I use this for my shorter pieces of wood, kindling such. I got this long wood holder. I would have done something a little bit different. I do fill this thing up to the ceiling, but what I'd like to do is put a divider on one side because I'd like to use one side, then the other, and I do have yet a third holder, but I like the wood that comes in from outside. Not that it isn't seasoned, I like it to warm up for at least a couple days. So if I empty one side and I'm working on the other and I bring in new wood, I'd like this wood to be separate, not all rolling into each other. And uh, depending on how cold it is outside, I, I can go through this whole thing in a week. It's about how much wood I burn in a week, but I'm using this stove to heat a 1900 square foot home, the whole thing. I think what I would have done differently instead of building that holder like I did, and I got all these funny parts, right? Got these at Lowe's. I would have gotten them in black. I got big wheels, so it's easy to move around. They cost more, but the small wheels sucked. You get something caught under them, there's always dust and debris. I don't know if you can see that. There's always dust and debris. Got my fancy broom there. I use that thing 10 times a day. What I would have done, instead of getting that holder or modifying it the way I did, I just would have gotten three of these. I would have lined them up one, two, three. And when one is done, I roll it outside, fill it up, roll it back in, and alternate. Gives the, gives the chance for any moisture that might be on the wood from, you know, your tarp doesn't hold everything perfectly even if you got two layers of tarp over time things rip and rain gets in there it gives the surface moisture a chance to dry just if you got a bunch of wood in a warm place if you got any questions um, leave them in the comments if you got a question about something, no matter how, how big or how small, if I can be helpful, if you're new to a wood-burning stove, where do I got one? What's the model? It's a Lopi Cape Cod, the larger model, built by Travis Industries. I bought it by House of 
at the House of Warmth in Brookfield, Connecticut. Um, I'm just the guy with a camera. And uh, I like the wood burning stove. I hate the wood. You know why I hate the wood? Because if you have a child and you know how to change, if you have to change diapers every two hours, this is the same thing. This is like changing diapers every two hours. You gotta keep feeding the stove. Not so much in March, right? Maybe it's like three times a day. But in the winter when it's real cold and you, and you wanna try to not get your heating system to cook on, every two hours this thing's blasting. But it works, it does a trick. You gotta work for it, but free heat. If you don't live in a place where there's a lot of wood and trees, you gotta write, pay for it or scarce, hard to find, but there's telling you around here, people who do tree removal, they give that stuff away for free. You just gotta know somebody, homeowners, they don't want it. Not everyone's got a wood burning stove. I made another video where there's trees always falling down on the side of the road for whatever reason. And if you're willing to put in the work, get a chainsaw, chop it up, bring it home, split it, get free heat. I've been burning for six years in the winter. I don't pay shit for heat. My propane system is heating hot water. And uh, a lot of people taking long hot showers. I fill up once a year. I don't use oil or, or propane to heat my house. Funny story. I'm trying to end here guys, but I gotta give you this funny story. When I started the wood burning stove, the first year I had it, it was the second year in the house or second winter. My oil guy called me, he goes, did you guys move out? Cause I came to fill up the oil, you didn't use any. Like, no, I'm, like, I'm not telling you my secret. I didn't tell him anything. He goes, oh, you got another supplier. I don't, you finish the contract. When it's finished, you don't need to be coming here every week. You figure it out, figure out. They couldn't figure out the timing, the frequency when they had to come here. I'm like, I'll call you. When I'm low, I'll call you. Didn't like that. My neighbor, he's, he, he, they're paying five, $6,000 a winter on home heating oil. Last year I paid 750 bucks for the whole year, including hot water. Again, guys, um, hopefully I helped someone. Hopefully I gave someone an interesting thought, something to think about. And if you click subscribe, all your dreams will come true. Here, the smoke's not coming out. It's being sucked into the back. That's how it burns nice and slowly. If you have the air off versus how you saw it in the beginning, they leave this door open, this will burst into flames. But it's a matter of temperature control, right? My house is warm. I don't need this thing ripping and rolling. <laughs>